Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I want to show you how I paint my very new Seraphon Warriors. I've been getting a lot of a lot of questions about how I paint them, so I thought I would do this quick tutorial. So as you can see, I start off painting the underbelly and the feet and the arms, and I used uh, Athematic Blue for that. That is a, a contrast paint from uh, Citadel. And uh, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you probably know that I'm a big, big fan of the contrast paints. I just think they work really well. Um, also bear in mind that these models that I'm painting here are meant as gaming pieces. I intend to have at least 40 warriors painted like this. So uh, whenever I can cut a few corners, I will. And so using contrast paints is like perfect for me. Um, I think it works really well on its own here. So I'm just still uh, leaving it at that basically. For the scales and the upper parts of the body, I use a Kilian Green, also a contrast paint. And I tried to see if I can get the darker blue and the lighter blue to sort of blend a little bit. So I use, uh, I do a sort of a wet blend here. You can see I has, have some athematic blue on the brush now, and then I'm just blending it in with the Achillean Green. Again, this is a gaming piece, so if it's not perfect, then I'm completely fine with it. I don't think that people will be really closely studying each uh, belly and each arm on every single 40 warriors. So it's completely fine by me if they're not perfect. I just want to have them uh, give off a sort of an overall nice impression. Then for the bone plates on the, on the spine and on the head, I use Skeleton Horde. Uh, another contrast paint. Uh, I think you will be seeing a pattern here. I, I, I like this paint a lot. I think it gives a nice uh, sort of uh, aged bone color, which is just perfect for the Seraphon Warriors. Then for the spear, I use a um, snakebite leather, also a contrast paint. And as you can probably see, it pulls a little bit and it's not really that efficient on a smooth surface such as the spear. But again, I don't think uh, the spear is what will be grabbing people's attention on this paint job anyway, so I, I don't really care. Then I use Retributor Armor for the gold parts. I've decided that I want uh, the main uh, metallic color on my Seraphon to be gold, and this is my favorite gold, so of course this is the one that I have decided to use here. Then to shade the gold, I use Cryptic Armor Shade mixed with a little bit of water because otherwise I find that it can get a little bit too dark for my liking. Um, and I just think it makes it look really nice and detailed and brings out all the little, uh, all the little details. Then for the spear, I've painted it with Retribute Armor and then I just give it a little wash of Nolan Oil. I don't know what we as hobbyists would do if we did not have Nolan Oil. It's just, I mean, it's perfect. Then I go back over the gold parts with the Retributor armor just to highlight them a little bit because as I said the cryptic armor shade really darkens things down and uh, so I just like to do a really quick highlight using the original gold color uh, afterwards. Then once I've done that I pick up my Stormhost silver and do a final highlight on the uh, metallic parts. And I use it as you can see both here on the gold parts and I also use it on the uh, on, on the tip of the spear as well. Just a quick edge highlight and a little bit of sort of scratch marks using the crotch hatch cross hatching pattern I really like. Then I grab my mood green and I place that individually on the scales. This is I have to be honest, this is a little bit time consuming, especially when you're considering that you're gonna paint like 40 warriors. And you could also get a nice effect, I think, using a dry brushing. But um, yeah, I like to do individual scales because I'm a bit silly. Then I pick up my Tesseract Glow and go over every single scale again because I want them to have a bit of a lighter green, yeah, sort of glowy effect. Because I mean, these are after all magical. Uh, lizard warriors, right? So uh, a little bit of glow effect uh, never hurt anyone. And yeah, this is, as I said, these are gaming pieces. So I try to be efficient, but I also try to do something that I think will end up looking really cool on the table. So it's uh, it's sort of a compromise. Lastly, on the scales, I use a bit of flaskage yellow. And as you can perhaps sort of glimpse here, I try to place it on the bigger scales, mainly on the top part of the scales. So this is where you would have uh, the light hitting, hitting the scales. And then I go over the uh, bone parts and I do a 
quick highlight using a wraith bone. And you can see I use again the uh, cross hatching pattern and that's because both for one, I like it. And also because on bigger lizards and bigger armor plates, that is also uh, what I intend to use. And then I also use the wraith bone on the teeth and on the eyes. Next up, I start working on these shields and I've decided to make them in sort of a rainbow color. And here I am using Blood Angels Red, also a contrast paint. And then I do a quick wet blend using another contrast paint. This one is Yand and Yellow. And as you can see, the contrast paints are just really easy to work with if you want to do a quick wet blend. Again, these are gaming pieces, so you could probably do something that was a bit more complicated and perhaps looked even more smooth. But for my purpose, this is perfect. And the green I'm using is Warp Lightning. And uh, I, I like this because it's one, you know, it, it's a very nice bright green, which I think fits this theme perfectly. Then once that's dry, I apply some uh, black paint. This is a black Templar, also a contrast paint, to the recesses between the scales, just to make sure that I get this rainbow color scheme sort of uh, to pop almost. Uh, you could definitely leave this out because again, this is time consuming and not necessary at all. Um, but I uh, am apparently a painting masochist, so I, I like <laughs> I like adding details like this. It, it just makes me happy doing these final touches on it. So, uh, But you could definitely leave it out. Then I take my mood green and do a, a edge highlight on the green parts of the armor. And next up, I will take my flash gets yellow and do the same both for the uh, yellow parts, as you can see here, but also a bit on the green and also a bit on the uh, red as well. Uh, I also do a slight cross, cross hatching pattern, as you can see here, again, to give some uh, visual interest and some detail and also to tie the whole army together once I get it all painted, which will probably take me at least, I don't know, four years. Then lastly, I take some wraith bone and just do really light highlight only on the yellow parts using the wraith bone. Then I, once the entire model is finished, I start working on the base. And as you can see here, I am using some milliput that I just try to attach pretty firmly to the base. And then I smooth it out with a bit of water. And then I use an Aztec textured rolling pin from Green Stuff World. As you can see, I've been using that a lot lately. Uh, I really like the rolling textured rolling pin, pins. I think they just are so easy to work with and gives your army a really nice cohesive look and well they don't require much work so uh, again as i said these are gaming pieces so whenever you have a chance to do something that's a little bit easier well why not go for it once that's dry i painted using the army painters skeleton bone and i'm i could probably just have used a spray or I used my airbrusher or something, but for this particular build, I just uh, needed to paint one, so I just used uh, my regular old brush. Then I grabbed my Reichland flesh shade and used that on most of the base. And then for the rest, I used the yand and yellow that I also used on the shield. I think that helps tie the whole piece together. And I also like the fact that you have a little bit of color variation going on on the base. I think it helps give a little bit more visual interest. And I try to soak up uh, the excess parts just uh, to make sure that I don't obscure all the details. Then I go back over it using the uh, skeleton bone from the armor painter. Again, this uh, bit could be left out. I mean, the base looks fine as it is. I just like to make sure I highlight all the details and I it, it makes me happy doing these things, as I said, also with the shield. Um, but it, it does take a bunch of time, so you could skip it definitely. Then I just put on a little bit of white glue, completely ordinary white glue from, I think, some DIY shop. And then I take some really bright green flock and put that on the base just to make it look like you have some Aztec ruins that are a tiny bit overgrown. And that is all I did. And here you can see the uh, final result. This is, a, this is a Seraphon warrior ready to go fight chaos, I think. And uh, I have to say, I really like this color scheme. I think it's fun and, I mean, it's not really, really quick to do, but you could definitely skip some parts of it and still get a really nice result that you would be really happy with, in, especially if you put them all in a squad of 10 or 20 or 40 guys. And here you can see my warrior together with a bunch of his, her, its friends. And I am so looking forward to being able to feel like an entire army painted in this color scheme. It'll be fun, but it'll take me forever to do, but I don't mind because, uh, well, I really enjoy painting anyway. 
So uh, let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you think it's uh, is it too much? Not enough. Um, and for those of you who may have been following my channel for a while, you might be sort of put off by the fact that there is no pink on these guys. Uh, I was really tempted, but then I decided that I would actually try doing a color scheme that did not include pink as one of its main colors. So I think I really challenged myself there. So let me know in the comments what you think and if you have any really exciting painting projects going on or if you are also a fan of the Seraphon. Um, if you want to stay up to date on my painting project, you are of course more than welcome to uh, like uh, this video and follow, subscribe to my channel. And you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram as Dice and Demons. Thank you so much for watching this one, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.